Good morning, brothers and sisters. Morning, Shifu. Morning, Shifu. How are you all today? Good. Ah, so, uh, tomorrow is New Year's Eve. Uh. Yeah. So, in the past two days, uh, the, I have, it's been a, a bit of a busy few days. So, two days ago, um, two, three days ago, I received news of uh, the passing away of uh, family members of a few students. Yeah. So, two days ago, I was, I was uh, trying to schedule the my my timing because uh, I have arranged uh, meet up with my ex colleague, uh, a long time friend, known him for, since two thousand. Uh, so it's it was uh, probably about 20, 20 plus years. Yeah. Uh, so met up with him. Then in the afternoon, uh, swing by to. Uh, one of the students, uh, the student's father's week. Yeah, student's father's week. And then I uh, was waiting for confirmation from another student. And that student said that uh, she, uh, her, 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 her mother, <clears throat> her mother uh, who has passed away, yeah, the, the timing is a bit rushed. So yesterday went down. Then uh, one of my uni friends, uh, there's a group of us, uh, close uni friends. So one of them, uh, father passed away. <laughs> yeah. So yesterday went to two, two weeks. Mm. Went to two weeks. Yeah, of course, <laughs> I'm telling you all because I trust that you all have the right view uh, or rather you all uh, okay with it. Uh, because <clears throat> some uh, in, in some Chinese custom, then you usually don't go to multiple weeks. <laughs> you go to one week, then you cannot go to another week. <laughs> yeah, or for that matter, it's so close to Chinese New Year. You go to a week, then later nobody wants to visit you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but monks have no such issue. Monks and nuns have no such issue. Yeah. Uh, there's another group of people who don't have such issue. They are called, uh, what are they called? Uh? Ah, they're called Buddhists. Buddhists. <laughs> uh, Buddhists also don't have such issue. <laughs> the non Buddhists maybe also don't have such issue. Um, but I, I'm not trying, I'm not saying that we are more superior because we don't have such issue. Okay. Uh, it stems from a different set of beliefs and views yeah um, the way it was presented to me in the past was more like uh, it was I mean such things are never positioned as superstition uh, and I don't look at it as superstition but it's uh, positioned as a taboo as a custom as something that you should not violate yeah that if you violate um, then like bad things is going to happen. How bad? Nobody knows. When will it happen? Nobody knows. How will it happen? Nobody knows. <laughs> but bad things will happen. Yeah. But before the bad thing happens, a lot of bad things will happen to you already. Yeah. Everybody will ostracize you. <laughs> everybody will be upset with you. But in the end, the, the, the actual bad thing that is supposed to happen may or may not happen, but those other bad things happen already. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and I, I, I had an experience of uh, why, why this uh, practice is present. Uh, a few years ago, um, there was this family uh, who experienced double, double passing away. Yeah. My student's father and the uncle passed away. Yeah, they were brothers. And um, so on Fusan, they invited me to visit them. Yeah. Uh, and I vaguely remember my mom telling me last time that third day, don't visit people's house. 
yeah, supposed to be some Chinese custom. That that day is is designated for those families who have uh, death in the family to either go to the temple or something. Yeah. Uh, so not supposed to go and visit people on Chu San. That means like family, family. Go temple, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. So then, um, of course, when I first heard about this way back, I didn't think much about it. And of course, nobody can really give me a reason why. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because most Chinese customs, in fact, most customs, most customs, no, most people don't know that then, then it becomes a custom. <laughs> it's a customer, <laughs> almost by definition. Customer are not meant to be explained, not meant to be known, you know. Not all, of course. But in this case, when I went to visit the, that family, <clears throat> it got me to appreciate why. Because they shared with me about how for their family, because there's two brothers within the family, so they are all in the same boat. And because that family is so neatly, um, so tightly knitted, not neatly tightened, <laughs> so tightly knitted, um, it was a no issue for them to come together, um, not to not so much to celebrate New Year, but to um, have a day of uh, remembrance in that sense. Yeah. Um, and of course, um, family and friends, extended family and friends or, uh, would probably not visit them. So on the third day when I went there, they shared this with me and <clears throat> it got me to appreciate that um, the, the Chinese custom of not celebrating birthday and not visiting those who have a death in the family stems from a very beautiful Chinese culture actually. Nothing to do with, um, in my opinion, uh, I could be wrong, but I, I believe that it has little, if ever, anything to do with some feng shui or some um, taboo, some, some kind of like mysterious um, elements, spiritual, no. It, it, it stems from the Chinese appreciation of emotions. <clears throat> you know, Chinese have this phrase, woman, woman, uh, <laughs> yeah. we, are, uh, we are people of culture, of etiquette. You know, there's a lot of value, uh, emphasis placed on this. Yeah, of course, the way it's presented today <clears throat> oftentimes creates confusion, creates uncertainty, and and a lot of misunderstanding. You know, one one very common thing is that, that we all know, and we we know without knowing that it's a Chinese culture. It is the now it is expressed as 要自动吗? right? Very automatically, we always. Feel like well, how come the person don't know right we feel that people should know why because this is actually something that dates back thousands years ago that chinese have this culture that we believe in all in structure you know time and place to do certain things and if we all do it then everything will be okay so as yes, we have this ingrained expectations and since everybody know so then we don't have to say anything it's a very chinese thing you know and we, we are like that without knowing really <laughs> because it's our culture. Culture is like that. You don't have to stage one. You know, but those who attend Chinese culture is those who are not Chinese, then they have to attend. <laughs> you know, but the trouble is sometimes we we it's so ingrained we and we don't know. Then, then after a while it becomes hazy why it's like that, you know. Yeah. And so this link to the passing of someone, then we don't have to say anything, but we know that they are suffering, that they, they, they are sad, they are grieving. So we don't want to go there to burden them with the whole thing of entertaining us. Yeah. And we all have experienced death in the family. So we know how it feels. So, so it becomes a practice that we don't go there. Because if we go there, then what are we supposed to say? Chinese New Year, Chiai Sun Bian. Cannot, right? And if you say, ah, Sinning Kwai Le, then the person like Kwai Smaller, <laughs> you know, so, so to avoid this kind of um, awkwardness, then we say, Let, let's just give them some time. Yeah. But 
over the thousands of years, then this practice become a taboo that, oh, you, you do, yeah, it's very bad. Of course, it's bad because you create that awkwardness, right? But it's not as though it's some, there's some spiritual, some magical thing that will happen. But sometimes we, we forget that the reason is that, and out of fear of the reason, we create a problem by itself. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then in the end, the only bad thing that happened is the thing that we created, not, not the, uh, the awkwardness. <laughs> That's the irony. And of course, linked to Chinese New Year, there are a lot of other things, right? Um, for that matter, not just Chinese New Year, but like Chinese, we are very afraid of people breaking things, right? Yeah, especially bowl, especially your rice, the eating bowl. You break that, what's your lot? So I tell you, uh, there was one year, one Chinese New Year. I can't remember which year, but there was one year. Uh, oh, there were two years. One year, I, I I'm usually like very laid back, you know, as a as a as a as a son. Not not that I not that I was tempted, but I'm like, I you ask me, if you ask me to do, I will do. But if you don't ask me to do, I'll just, da, 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 I'm okay. <laughs> da, 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 da. So one year, I, I all know. One Chinese New Year, I all know. Early morning, wake up. On the first day of Chinese New Year, ah, hmm, there's a bit of dust. Let me sweep the floor. <laughs> <laughs> of all things to do, it's like, hmm, da, then sweet, right? <laughs> oh, that is, that year, super lucky. Yeah, sweep away all the defilements. <laughs> But that day, luckily, my dad haven't wake up yet. My mom, when when she just happened to come out there, it was me. <laughs> you should have seen her face. The, the fear in her eyes, like, <laughs> oh, immediately, like, <laughs> yeah, it was so funny. Probably not so funny for her, but <laughs> it was quite funny for me. It's like, what? And later, not so funny because I got really, like, scolded. So the only bad thing that happened was her fear I mean, I, I, I don't mean to laugh at her, but I can, I can only Im imagine how, how much stress she, she went through because I don't think uh, there's a, probably like maybe 20% of fear of what may happen, which is like bad luck and all those things, right? But the 80% is, you know what? Fear that my father see and then all hell break loose. <laughs> so the only bad luck that comes is if we react to it, if we create all the anger and anxiety, you know, that's the bad luck. <laughs> yeah. To me, that's the bad luck. But there's one more thing I mentioned about breaking, right? So there was another year. Don't know whether it's the same year, but probably another year. Got to spread out the bad things, right? <laughs> so one year. So usually my mom would ask me to cook rice and then usually also serve the rice, right? On a daily basis. Since secondary school, I that's my job at home. Then. Chinese New Year, she asked me to go and tap them, go and scoop the rice. So, scoop, okay, good. I mean, by then I was probably like, um, past, should be past secondary school. So I scoop, scoop, scoop. Then, you know, the rice, sometimes if it's a bit too moist, it's sticky. So, so I, I did a very natural thing. I hit, no? <laughs> How do I know that it's so poor quality? I, one hit, pyap! <laughs> one piece came out, I was like, oh. What happened? <laughs> and again, luckily, my father was busy somewhere. <laughs> yeah, he is super conscientious in making sure the whole house it looks like Ikea showroom. You know? Wow. Like one week or two weeks before Chinese New Year, it's our yearly uh, ritual. We will whitewash our walls, you know. So my shock when I started visited, visiting friends or people, and I'm like, Wow, how come your house is like that one? <laughs> because our house is my father has a higher 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 standard than HDB. HDB white washing once every five years, then major one like every every 10 years, right? For my father, every year no ceiling included. <laughs> so and oftentimes until like Chu Si still cleaning. So sometimes even on first day, usually first day not doing anything, like, but he's probably you know, grooming himself. <laughs> so, yeah, 
oh, my mom again panic. <laughs> then, but because it's almost like, don't know, lunch or should be lunch time. Uh. So he, he, she didn't make, make a fuss out of it. Then she quickly like, come with you, come with you. Moho Papa <laughs> Oh boy. And I, I, I never quite understand what is so bad about breaking the bowl. I mean, it's quite obvious. Breaking things is not a good thing, right? But what is so bad about it happening if it's accidental, right? Yeah. I suspect, I suspect, okay, this is my conjecture. I suspect things are not commoditized in the past, okay? It's not like now a factory every year produce 100,000, you know? And then you go Ikea, sell one whole, one whole box, like $10, $10 or what, yeah? And then all, all super nice ceramic, whatever. In the past, things are, are not easy to obtain. So if you break one bowl, that goes into your P&L, you know? <laughs> yeah, it incurs a loss in your overall P&L. You break just one bowl, that's, that's a loss. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you got, to, you got to go and replace it, right? So that itself is the problem. To, to me, that is the problem. Yeah. Are there some, some spirit who don't like things to be broken? And if you break it, then they will harm you. I mean, it, maybe they are. Lah. Maybe they are. Maybe they don't, they don't like the sound of things breaking. I don't know. What like what, why what, if they are, why are they upset? I, I want to I want to have a talk with them, you know, like come on, let's let's have a chat. Like, especially, especially if they're supposed to be Dharma guardian or house guardian you're supposed to guard me not 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 come and harm me right <laughs> are you stupid or what <laughs> right the Zhao Sen, i mean chinese have a lot of interesting idea like the Zhao Sen once a year will go up and then report on you right so if they're reporting you know they're not helping you know you must know clearly though know, they're like the ambassador reporting on you <laughs> yeah but on the other hand on the other hand um Ambassadors are not bad also. Uh. They are there to make sure that you keep yourself safe. <laughs> uh, they are there to make sure you are safe, you know. But nobody like that. Nobody like it. Everybody like to do as they please. Mm. Perhaps if we understand it this way, then we won't be so fear fearful. No? We won't live our life so fearful. Break one thing, wow, scared. Breaking both, no problem. Yeah. We should be scared of breaking the precepts. We should be even more frightened of breaking the views. Both, you can be replaced. You break your view or very severe. No, very severe. Yeah. So I hope everybody have a stress-free new year. No, stress-free new year. Okay. Uh, exercise for the day. Some of, I talk too long. Some of them run off already. Okay. Exercise was supposed to be a reflection of impermanence. <clears throat> yeah, because I went for three weeks. Yeah. So there are, there's a few stages of a reflection. I will just say in brief. The first thing is it's very simple. One, the first question, ask yourself, 100 years from now, will the thing still matter? Yeah. The ren shi wu, will it still matter 100 years from now? Chances are, None of the things we are concerned about 100 years later will matter. None. Yeah. Yeah. You think about it. When several at first, they were signing the treaty and then they were maybe like going through scrubbing the, the contract and then like, hey, how many thousand dollars or whatever. <laughs> after, after all these years now, <laughs> who cares, right? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so first thing, 100 years from now, does it matter? In our likelihood, probably not matter. Yeah. But it doesn't change the fact that now it matters. Huh? It just means it's giving us perspective. How much should it matter? Okay. Second question. 100 years ago, does it exist? Does it matter? Probably but did it exist? Yeah. When is the last time you met someone who who, who is 100 over years old? Yeah. There are. Yeah, there are. But for the most part, most of us know. Yeah. So 100 years ago, that thing, that person don't exist. So we know that from these two questions, we know that 
first it doesn't exist then it exists then don't exist again right so from here you can see delta delta right in the log macro, macro scale from non-existence to existence that's impermanence from existence to non-existence again impermanence so we know practically anything and everything we encounter is subject to this yeah very simple we don't need super jhana whatever you just reflect in this way yeah uh, can actually there's a few more layers uh, but <clears throat> uh, you, you need to do part by part then next part will you will appreciate a bit more okay we can do this exercise no? mm. Amitabha. Amitabha.